Hey guys, what's going on? Insidious Swede, back again here for another YouTube video, and welcome to my first impressions on the new vertical series, Immortal Hounds. Um, as a lot of you know, I just got this first volume, I showed it off on my last manga haul video, and I asked if you guys wanted to see a video on it, and I got a lot of comments saying yes, so here I am bringing you guys my initial thoughts on this manga. So basically, the first thing that you need to know about this series is that in this reality, people do not die. Whether you're hit by a car or in the example that they give you, you're shot in the head, and there it is right there. No matter what, you can come back to life, or um, I think a better word to use is that you're resurrected. And no matter what, it's just kind of a part of society. However, um, Early on in this volume, you learn of this new disease getting spread around known as RDS. And RDS stands for Resurrection Deficiency Syndrome, um, obviously meaning you cannot come back to life. And so this becomes a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, the disease is getting spread by people known as vectors. Basically, they're hosts of this disease. And the only way if you can contract it is if you're in contact with that person for a long time actually a phrase this book uses to describe the contraction of RDS is you can only get it if you're in love with somebody who has it and I think that's a very accurate description for um, how it's passed along. Now there's two main characters. The first one is Rin who's on this front cover. Her job is to protect these vectors so that they can continue to spread this disease and even though she's kind of a villain, she's really considered, I would say, our protagonist even though this book hasn't really said, yes, this is your main character, this is the person you should be caring about. It's kind of open in that sense, there's not a lot of characterization which is uh, probably one of the weaker spots of this first volume. It's kind of more just telling you what you need to know, though I think that can be corrected pretty easily in a later volume, getting more into their backstory. Uh, but the other main character that they focus on is a lieutenant in the police force known as Kenzaki. And there is uh, Kenzaki right there. He is head of the task force trying to stop these vectors and stop people like Rin from spreading this disease so they so people can continue to live on forever and not get killed and this kind of begins our main story i would say for the first five or so chapters in this first volume it's a little bit repetitive you know you have a, a vector getting found kenzaki goes to chase to find that vector to arrest them and then rin ends up stopping him and the police force it kind of goes on like that for a little bit though i would say in the last two chapters of this first volume it gets a lot more interesting we get introduced to kind of the main antagonist and we learn more about kenzaki more about rin in particular and i think it's definitely building towards something a lot more interesting Again, the only real negatives of this first volume is that A, not a lot of characterization, and B, you get a lot of questions raised, but literally nothing is answered. So basically, once you finish this first volume, you have nothing but, I don't know what's going on, I need to find out more, which can be good in some sense, it makes you want to read the next volume, but at the same time, I kind of felt a little open and like, what did I just read? Did that make sense? This didn't really happen the way that I thought and stuff like that. So. Overall, it was a very good first volume, but again, it can build off it and get a lot better for sure. But uh, that's kind of just my initial thoughts on this first volume. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down below, guys. But thank you for watching. I am Insidious Swede, and until next time, take care.